to start off this look, I'm just going to be doing the regular base that I have been doing for a while now. I'm going to use a primer. One tip for if you're using a cushion foundation, especially if it's one that has a lot of coverage, is to dip. You don't even have to dip that much into it, but um, kind of pat it or impress it into the lid of the cushion so that you get an even like distribution on the puff. Then I'm going to use this um, this thing. I have used this on my channel a long, long time, but I keep bu freaking buying it. It's a concealer that has a bit of a salmon undertone so that it's, you know, specifically for dark circles. But um, I'm applying it on this concealer brush evenly and I'm going to kind of pat it just in the dark parts under my eyes right here, like the main part of the dark circle. And whatever is left on the brush, I'm going to take it across my lash line. And then I also have a bit of darkness at the outer corner of my eye here. So that it really lifts like the darkness around the eye. I wish you could do the same for my soul. And I'm gonna take this new Cleo concealer, the Airy Fit Concealer. It's basically a light version of the Pro Liquid Concealer from Cleo. Now before I set my face with the powder, I'm gonna use a cream um I guess bronzer contour stick to um, add warmth around the face and this will create the base for the whole kind of like Nikki Puniki feeling. So I'm putting what looks like a rainbow of shit on my forehead along the tops of my cheeks and then taking it down onto the jaw like a three and just blending it. Also down the neck on the side. The little bit that I put on my cheek here, I'm taking actually quite a bit a ways in onto my cheek because that's going to be part of the blush that we're going to be doing later. So Skin Food got rid of one of my favorite, um, the uh, peach sake powder, and they replaced. They made a whole line, I think. Um, this is the peach cotton multi finish powder, and it's pretty much the same thing. It just smells less of peach. It still has that peach fragrance to it, but not as strong. The other one was really strong. So for under my eyes, I'm going to use a tiny little beauty blender just so that I really set that cream under my eyes because this concealer tends to crease if you have super fine lines like me. But for the rest of my face, I'm just going to use um, a powder brush. Actually, no, I'll just, I'll just use the puff that this came with. It's not going to be a really glowy look, it's just going to be a uh, really soft matte velvety um, look that we have for the, the skin. My brows are nothing special. I'm just filling them in the way I normally do, but the main point for the brows is that I'm going to be making them quite brown. I primed my lids already with this stuff. Primer for me is really important because my eyelids, they're hooded, so they will crease. They will crease. Today I'm using Renaissance, modern, modern Renaissance. I actually did, uh, if anyone was curious, I did check out the Subculture palette from Sephora, and um, I didn't have a brush, so I couldn't test like do that thing that that girl was doing. Was like she was like shoving her brush in there, but I touched my finger in it, and it was it was it was still pigmented. Anyway, I'm using this one because uh, I'm using a lot of oranges and reds today, just like the bronzer that I use on my face. Um, this burnt orange color is going to be the base um, for the eyeshadow look and it's going to create, it's going to set the mood for the makeup. I don't want this to be super strong, this color specifically, so um, I'm using it on a really fluffy wide brush. And I'm going to create just a wash all over the lid. I always make that mocking voice, kind of mocking the stereotypical be grill. But it that's like I do that myself too, so I wouldn't. I'm also taking it down around the outer corner. On the lower. 
part of the lid. You do want the placement of the color to be quite wide, but I am gonna really blend off that edge because I want it to disappear into nothing. And then I'm taking red ochre, just a really, like a brick shade. And that's gonna go on the outer corner and kind of on the lash line. So right here on the outer corner, but then taking it down across. Like that. I guess you can take it down. Whatever's left in the brush, you can take it down. On the outer corner of the lower lash line. And then next what I'm gonna do is uh, warm taupe. Here it's just like a, kind of like a contour color actually. Like the name suggests, it's a taupe color. I'm gonna take it on like a really pointy brush. And we're taking that, you see where my crease is right here? I'm gonna use the color to kind of extend and almost create like a fake crease. Um, and this will just, this will elongate the eyes. So placing the brush at the very end of the crease, kind of, kind of lifting my brows up a little bit to make it easier, but I'm just following my natural crease line. That will deepen the socket. I'll blend it in just a little bit, not too, too much, because if you blend it too much, then there honestly wouldn't have been a point in you putting it there. Then I'm gonna take Antique Bronze, and it's just, it's a bronze color, but more like, a, has a plummy uh, purple undertone, and there is a little bit of like, violet flecks of glitter or shimmer in there, but you really don't notice it up close, like once it's on the lid, so I'm putting that on the very outer V of my eye. but also really close to the lash line on the bottom right here. Actually, I don't want this to be too, too orange. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm taking these two colors here in this palette and I'm gonna add those on top of the lid right here, on kind of the inner corner. And this almost like, it'll just change like the undertone of that main lid color we had to kind of more pink. It's such a subtle difference that you probably don't have to do it. For the last bit of eyeshadow, I'm gonna take a really, really fluffy brush and that color that we used, burnt orange, I'm gonna go back into it right there and I'm actually taking a lot of it, nearly all of it off on the back of my hand because I want there almost like blush for the eyes, if that makes sense. Whatever pigment is left on the brush, I'm gonna buff it on the outer, a lot, basically around here. Uh, mostly on the lower part, almost like you got any makeup, in a way. I'm also doing the same for the inner corner here. Look at me, being a makeup artist. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I'm like in the, uh, cor the, what is it, the contour area. And it looks really fucking weird now, but it will all Hopefully. It will all work when we put the blush on. Oh wait, hold on. Also, uh, mascara. This is actually a burgundy colored mascara. It's from Petty Pettis Ink Line and I'm not using this actually, well, it's actually a good mascara in general. It's very similar to the Etude House one I used to use all the time, but I'm using this mostly just cause um, I want to tint my lashes red brown. It gives you a lot of length, but really I'm gonna apply the mascara so that my lashes are colored then I'm kind of just like taming them hose down because I don't want them to like lift up. I kind of just want my lashes to be colored. And that as well is also like very subtle difference, but um, I like it. So now um, I'm gonna finish off the face. I'm going to bronze the outer parts of my face again to accentuate that um, cream contour that we were doing earlier. I keep using bronze and contour interchangeably, but you know, the outside of the face. Um, I kind of j have just been taking a big ass fluffy brush, this is from e.l.f., and I kind of just like randomly dip into the shades here, and I just slap that hoe on. I don't really have a method. But I'm definitely going quite wide on the cheeks here. I'm gonna use the cool tone powder though to contour the sides of my nose. A 
one of the really important parts of the look is the blush. I'm using, along with like the bronzer, whatever color I use on the sides of the face, I'm gonna create almost like a, a gradient of color. Um, so we've got the bronze and now I'm gonna use like an orange uh, blush. It's gonna go quite wider up here. And also across the nose. In general, just across the cheeks. How about we do that? How about that? And then to add a little bit of um, a rosy wash to it, I'm gonna use a warm pink blush. And this is gonna be more concentrated on the upper part, very close to like where the orange eyeshadow we had was. And also, again, across the cheek, oh, the nose. And actually, just a little bit above the brows here. Now for highlight, I'm using MAC Soft and Gentle because uh, this has more of like a apricot gold undertone to it. It's not going to be too um, stark on the skin. And honestly, you can probably just skip highlighter because this is not really a highlighter-y look. It's more about the warm matte tones that we have going around on the face. Girl, I want to stay so I'm only putting like a tiny bit. Now, uh, is that it? Is that it? Because I feel like I'm always forgetting something. Last but not least, we're gonna move on to the lips. For the lips, it's going to also be in the same tonal family. Uh, I'm using a NYX lingerie liquid lipstick that a subscriber gave to me. This is a very, very nude shade. It almost has like a gray, un did I put this on my hand? No, I didn't. It has like a gray undertone to it. And, here, let me just put it on first. And just haphazardly putting on the lips to buff and blend that out. I'm using a really small pointy eyeshadow brush. You know, I think I have lip balm on my lips. If you have lip balm on your lips, take it off before you put a liquid lipstick on. I'm gonna take the eyeshadow brush and I'm gonna use the very tip of it to buff and blend the upper, I almost said waterline, upper and lower line of the lips. And this will create the illusion of not only bigger lips, but um, this kind of application of applying li lipstick and kind of using a brush to blend it to the edge of lips, even if it's not overdrawing, but just blending it to the edge of the lips. So you have a full lip application, but it's not as harsh on the edges. That's been quite popular in Korea lately. And honestly, I think it's a more modern way of putting lipstick on. And honestly, just this way of putting your lipstick on makes your lips look way bigger. Some people don't really care for that, but... You know. No, I feel like alone with that liquid lipstick on, you, like it's obvious I have like lipstick on my lips, but adding a, putting it, applying it like that and then adding a color like this, this is like a hot red, but just like not even that much. And blending that in a gradation This will not only one, this will create like the undertone of the lipstick color that I want, but adding that color almost makes it look like the previous color is my natu na natural, natural lip color. Does that make any sense? I don't know if it makes sense, probably not. Dude, my lips look fucking huge. Okay, all right. That's pretty much the makeup done. Um, because I use a lot of powders on my face, I'm going to I'm going to use a setting spray to set everything down. All right, there's the finished look. Um, this has actually also been my daily makeup. So it's a lot of fucking makeup for daily makeup, but it is what it is. Uh, I hope you guys find that useful. All the products that I use will be down below, of course, as usual, and I'll see you um, in my next video. Sorry I've been gone for a week. Um, yeah, bye. <laughs>